From 1979 to 1992, El Salvador hosted a gruesome civil war. For those 12 long years, the poor rebelled against their government for human rights and better living conditions. Many mission groups were sent to help the innocent that were suffering during the war. Unfortunately, the government made it extremely difficult for those people to help. This did not stop Jean Donovan from trying to help the poor El Salvadorans. She knew it was her duty to help, so she traveled to El Salvador despite the opposition from the El Salvadoran government. Unfortunately, her compassion would make her a martyr for social reform. Jean was born on April 10, 1953 in Westport, Connecticut. Her parents, Patricia and Raymond, raised her and her older brother in an upper middle class neighborhood. She attended Mary Washington College in Virginia, where she eventually earned her master's degree in business. During college, she spent a life-changing year in Ireland. There, she met a charismatic priest who was dedicated to the struggle of poor Latin Americans. He taught her the importance of solidarity and compassion. He told her stories of people that were suffering. They needed someone to listen to them and to help them. He also told her that wealth was not worth living for. Instead, she should devote her life to God and live a life of compassion. That trip strengthened her faith and resolve in such a way that she gave up her successful life as an accountant in 1997 to work as a volunteer in El Salvador. Through a Catholic relief organization, Jean was sent to La Libertad, a small village on the Pacific Ocean. There, she worked with others to transport supplies and provide education to the villagers. She even used her business knowledge to do financial work for the village. The people at La Libertad quickly grew to love her for her help. They even dubbed her Saint Jean the Playful due to her fun and easygoing personality. Her mother knew how much the villagers meant to Jean. She noted how much compassion Jean had for them. Jean took her commitment to the Campesinos very seriously, says her mother. She was strongly motivated by Saint Francis of Assisi and by Archbishop Oscar Romero. She translated God's teachings into clothing for the poor, feeding the hungry, and caring for wounded refugees, mainly children, who had lost what little that they had. In late 1980, Jean began to notice that El Salvador became even more dangerous. The El Salvador military became a lot more violent when they were quelling support for the rebels. Jean's friends and family feared for her life and begged her to return home. She knew how dangerous it was for her to remain there. However, she wrote to a friend and told her why she could not leave. I almost could, Jean said, except for the children, the poor, bruised victims of this insanity. Who would care for them? Whose heart could be so staunch as to favor the reasonable thing in a sea of their tears and loneliness? Not mine, dear friend. Not mine. However, her sympathy for the poor proved to be her downfall. On December 2nd, 1980, Jean and three other nuns were abducted by a small group of El Salvador soldiers. It was a death squad. They were then raped, executed, and buried in a shallow, unmarked grave. Their bodies were uncovered two days later. The death of these four women sparked a lot of controversy throughout the U.S. With the exception of Archbishop Romero earlier that year, only El Salvadorans were being killed by the military. Now U.S. citizens were being murdered. News coverage about the events in El Salvador increased. Soon people began to realize the awful conditions the poor were living in. They protested the U.S. government to stop supporting the El Salvadoran government and help bring about social reform. Jean Donovan was a compassionate woman who lived her life helping others. She was not known as a social reform activist, even though she saw the hardships the poor lived through. She wanted to help them directly and be there for them. Her martyrdom sparked a wave of social reform and helped to enforce human rights. However, there are lessons to be taken from how she lived her life. Like her, we should try to live with compassion for the poor and strive to understand their suffering in order to help them out better.